Hey everyone, what is going on? It is Brian and we are back. And as we close out 2021, are now into the year 2022, I figured I would do some sort of wrap up. And this won't be my wrap up video of the year 2021. If you're interested in hearing me talk about that, leave me a comment down below because I've been going back and forth whether I should do kind of a roundup video. But in lieu of doing uh, favorite bourbons of the year video, and I just feel like it's difficult to do that because I know there's a lot of products I'm able to try, and it's not all products that is easily findable for you all. And I don't know how much help that will be. Some of these videos, I've, I've talked about some of these bottles already on the channel, but if you do wanna hear me wrap those up, leave me a comment down below. The point of this video though, would be for me to talk about several of the store picks or group picks or single barrel products that have come out this year that would be in my top list. The thing that I did notice is that there were a lot of barrel picks that I really enjoyed in my hope coming out of this is that it would encourage you all to find groups or find stores that you align with palette wise that you might be able to find picks that you find excellent at the end of 2022. That there are things that you come to find out you didn't have to break the bank for and everything that we're going to talk about today is under the hundred dollar price point. Uh, a majority of those bottles fall right in the middle. So we have 10 whiskeys that we're gonna talk about and let's dive right in with number 10. Coming in at number 10, it might actually have been a bottle that released last year, or excuse me, in 2020, but it's a bottle that I acquired in 2021 and that is a Wilderness Trail bourbon. This is five years old and this was a collective pick from several stores and one group here in Louisville, Kentucky. From the Silver Dollar, the Breeze, which is a wine and spirit shop that's uh, close to my work, and then with the Kobe Group. And what I loved about this Wilderness Trail, I'm not incredibly versed in a lot of the Wilderness Trail products, but this one had this cola-like sweetness to it that I just couldn't get enough of. It still has kind of the youthful whiskey tell, but I just love profiles that you have a lot of the brown sugar and a lot of the sweetness. And this one forewent a lot of the kind of spice youth characteristic in favor of these nice cola-like brown sugar um, sweet notes. So that is number 10. Coming in at number nine comes from Bullet Bourbon. Now this one is a pick from a group called Louisville Whiskey Thieves. It's another group that is local here in Louisville. The thing that I love about these Bullet picks so much is that they do probably have a little bit of an age range to them. But I've had several of these picks from various groups that are in this 10, 11 year age range. And for the retail price that these bullet picks are coming in at, I presently think that these store picks are some of the best values out there. I think it's easy for people to hear bullet and they don't think twice. These are picks that at this time, I still see sitting on a lot of store shelves. But I think the product that you're getting here is fantastic. This particular bottle that we picked in general reminded me of a couple of really nice Four Roses single barrels that I've had before and, and just had a good sweetness and a good spice and, and a lot of flavor for such a low price point. And for that reason, I have that bullet here at number nine. Jumping in at number eight, some of you all might be familiar if you've watched this channel or you tune into Injury Proof Podcast with Drew P. Whiskey. And this happens to be our Dancing Goat Distillery 100% American corn whiskey pick. This is seven years old, it's cask strength, and this is just a really interesting product. I feel like if you don't set yourself upright, or it's the first pour you've had, you definitely get a lot of the grain, um, excuse me, the, the corn flavor come through. But once your palate is acclimated or you have other pours in front of that, you get this bold, oaky, smoky, really interesting profile that kind of separates it from all the bourbons that are on this list and really gives it its own profile. And while we sold out of the bottles that we have for this, the thing about that time of this recording, I believe there's still some of these left over on sealbox.com that came in after our initial run sold out that Blake may still have. If that's possible, I'll have the link down below in the show notes. But that is number eight on the list. Coming in at number seven on the list is a hundred proof single barrel that came from Old Forester in a private tour that they did. This is the Chairman's Choice. Again, it's 100 proof. This was a special, supposedly story went 
while we were in our tasting that it was pulled from the stocks that was aging for birthday bourbon here in a couple of years. And so you're getting this plus eight year, 100 proof bottling. And me personally, I haven't really talked about it on the channel all that much, but if you're familiar with some of my uh, conversations on the live chats and whatnot, I have not really liked a lot of the old Forester barrel strength products that have come out. I think they're a little too hot. I think they're a little too sharp. Uh, and the 90 proofs are really good, but I think that the 100 proofs are a really nice sweet spot. They have really good body, really good balance. And this one just drinks really nice, really sweet, good complexity. It does have some of the flavors that you might be looking for in kind of the older age Brown Vorman products, although it is still a little bit on the young side. But proof wise, it comes out really, really similar to to around where the birthday bourbons have been. So you're finding something that's just a little bit younger, maybe sitting more closer to President's Choice. But this was a retail product, at $60, very hard to pass up. Again, I know you're not going to get this specific one. And as is the case with a lot of things that we're talking about, but my hope is that these are generalizations that help you all go after products that might be enjoyable coming throughout this year. Coming in at number six is a product that I had in a flight that I did of various Russell Reserve picks. Uh, again, this one might have come out towards the end of 2020, but I acquired it in 2021. It is from a group out of Lexington, uh, the Kentucky uh, Supply and Demand. Warehouse E Floor 4 pick has tons of these Dr. Pepper, uh, uh, again, more of the cola like in the Wilderness Trail, some cherry notes. Uh, just a really nice balanced and sweet drinkable Russell's Reserve that hits on the profile of what I'm looking for. We are moving in on the top five now, and I have to bring up this Nashville release of Nashville Barrel Company five-year product. The, the color on this bottle alone is super dark and very different from a lot of the other products that I've had. It's a little on the high price side for a five-year product, but there's these coconut sugar flavor notes in this that are unlike any other bourbon that I've had, and it shows good promise for this particular run or, or just the, the stock that they're getting at Nashville Barrel Company. And this bottle alone, again, it, it brings back some excitement for where these younger whiskeys can be in a world where a lot of the younger whiskeys that you have are kind of hot, kind of hard to handle, a little grainy. Um, this one brought back a lot of good feelings, especially with that sweetness that was unlike any other bourbon. Surprisingly enough, number four on the list is a product that going into a couple of live streams ago with Drew P. Whiskey, I wasn't sure what I was going to think about this when I popped it, but it happens to be the Woodland Wine Merchant, again out of Nashville, Tennessee, their private barrel of Elijah Craig. This is one of the barrel proof expressions. It's nine years old. I was nervous it was going to be really hot, really nutty, kind of some of the negative attributes that I have about Heaven Hill products. But what I came to find in the bottle were a lot of sweet fruits, a lot of red fruits, a lot of chocolate notes, really similar to the flavor profile I've noticed in other Woodland Wine Merchant picks that I've had in the past. And, and I was really surprised with this. I didn't hate the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof batches that came out this year. I also didn't love them, but I think that this one easily for me, um, while off profile from those, it was an incredible whiskey and I was really glad to open this one. And, and definitely challenged what I thought about the single barrel program to come out of Elijah Craig and what it might do for the brand. I was really excited to, to get this bottle in. Moving on to number three is a bottle that I was not able to acquire this year, but I tried it on several occasions at the bar in Nulu. If you follow me on Instagram, Abandoned Bourbon, you will see pictures of me at this bar quite often. And that is the Cox Evergreen release Stag Junior pick. Now, I am not historically a really big Stag Junior drinker, some of the batches that came out this year have actually really turned me on to it. I think it's been a really solid product, the batches I've been able to try, but it was really off profile, the bottle that I thought Evergreen and Cox had. It had a lot of herbal, grassy kind of tones, and when it comes to Buffalo Trace products, that's actually a characteristic I really like that I find in Blanton's or Blanton's straight from, from the barrel. And so it had a lot of really unique flavors, different than the cherry profile that I feel like Stag Jr. normally goes off profile, really enjoyable. I wish I could have acquired a bottle, but on the several times that I had it, it still sticks with me today as one of the better Stag Juniors that I've had. Moving now into number two, comes from a run that you've heard me talk about many times from Four Roses. It's this PS58 run of OESV recipes, and this one 
comes from BevMo. I've tried a whole lot of bottles from this run and they've varied in some of the flavor profile, but the balance that comes with this BevMo OESV, to me, it has oak, it has sweet, it has fruitiness, it has complexity, it has every flavor that I like about Four Roses in perfect balance. And I feel like it's just a perfect telling. If you were to tell somebody, what's the, what's the best experience you can get out of a Four Roses barrel? Maybe it's not the best bottle they ever put out, but it gives you the flavor profile that says, I'm, I'm proud to say, this is what Four Roses can do. And that's what I feel like I find in this bottle. Again, tons of complexity, great flavor, a finish that lasts forever, uh, and the perfect amount of oakiness for me. That brings us into the number one single barrel pick or store pick that, that I've come into this year. I've also talked about this already on the channel in, in my top five you know, relatively available bourbons, but I'm gonna bring it back now. And that is the 94 proof, the regular, Elijah Craig small batch single barrel. I know I just said small batch single barrel, but why? Um, these are single barrel regular uh, Elijah Craig's that was picked for the Bourbon Festival uh, by Justin's House of Bourbon. It turned out to be 13 years old, and some of the nuance and complexity out of this is just crazy for a bottle that came in around this $40, $45. A little bit marked up from what other stores pick as Elijah Craig picks, but just all around a, a perfect bourbon. I think that it, it gives me a lot of flavors of things that I like in the Russell's 13 and some other products that I've had this year, but such an affordable price point. It's super drinkable. It's one of those things that give you a lot of good age and an amazing price and no fear of really emptying that bottle out. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. Again, I know that these products are not going to necessarily be accessible to you all. My hope is that you see some of the lines uh, some of the brands that are bringing out some really good barrels, and that could be informational for you all going into this next year, or at least is suggesting to you all, you don't have to go after the unicorns. You can find delicious, amazing single barrel picks coming out of the groups and the stores that you already frequent. Thanks so much, everybody, for tuning in. If you want to enjoy more content, tune into the Entry Proof Podcast, the podcast that I do with Drew P. Whiskey. He's also here on YouTube, and we're live on his channel Thursday nights doing uh, rundowns of our barrel picks, blind flights, all sorts of things. If you want to support what I'm doing here, what Drew's doing on his channel, consider supporting us on patreon.com slash entryproofpodcast. Until next time, everybody, we'll see you all later.